on this episode of Tell Us a Story. So within six months of graduating, I burnt out. Um, And it's no surprise for some because we just don't get taught how to look after ourselves as nurses. That is such important work. And I think nurses are the first ones to provide care and often the last ones to ask for it. Oh, yes. How do you manage shift work? How do you sleep? How do you unwind from work? Um, how do I deal with the trauma of having um, ex- have experiencing death regularly? It's probably not going to change, but what we do have control over is how we work within the system. At Nursing the Nurse, uh, we help nurses beat and prevent burnout. Welcome to Tell Us a Story, the podcast by Belmont City Press, where entrepreneurs and sales professionals share their journeys, insights, and strategies for success. In each episode, our guests reveal how they've overcome challenges, established their brands, and leveraged their stories to promote their businesses so you can too. I'm Red Hilton, your host for this episode. Today I'm joined by Janelle, who is the founder of Nursing the Nurse. So, Janelle, tell us a story. Hi, Red. Thank you so much for having me. So at Nursing the Nurse, uh, we help nurses beat and prevent burnout with the specific purpose of staying on in a professional, in, in the profession that they love. Um, our ideal client is a nurse who is questioning whether they are cut out for the demands of the job and is looking to find the self-care they need um, and achieve work-life balance while they uh, alleviate the guilt of becoming healthily selfish. Uh, so they ultimately, um, the long-term goal is for them to have a sustainable career. Um, you can discover more information about us at our website, at nursingthenurse.com, and we can easily be reached at uh, via hello at nursingthenurse.com. Um, reaching out, um, just please reach out if you want to find out more and become healthily selfish together. <laughs> that is such important work. And I think nurses are the first ones to provide care and often the last ones to ask for it. Oh, yes. So talk to us about your journey and how the, you know, to getting to nursing the nurse, how it became, came to be. Yeah. Oh, well, it's a, a, an experience or a story of having, having been there myself. So within six months of graduating, I burnt out. Um, And it's no surprise for some because we just don't get taught how to look after ourselves as nurses, exactly like you just said. Um, you know, yeah, we just, we just don't know. And so what happened was I started noticing a few things uh, leading up to my, my, that moment of burnout where I was not sleeping well, or I would get home and I would be snapping at my family. My personal relationships were deteriorating. I wasn't eating. I wasn't exercising. I even called in sick to work a couple of times, just because the thought of going in just filled me with anxiety and um you know I I just wasn't using my sick days for sick leave I was using it for I need a break um and you know I started again noticing the same in my colleagues and what shocked me was that they had already been two three five ten years into their working or in their career and I was like oh like I'm only I'm only less than six months in like Mm. how how am I you know what am I going to do and um I was like, right, I need to ask a question. I need to start getting some answers. How am I going to not end up a bitter nurse? How am I going to not end up burnt out um, and broken in many ways? And I asked my nurse educator that question. What can I do? What What are some strategies that you recommend? And obviously she's just a nurse educator. And she came back with the following. <laughs> Get used to it. It's not going to change. Now. <laughs> now, that, if you know that me. That seems helpful. <laughs> It really, that, it really was that so helpful. helpful. <laughs> and so it was so helpful to the point that I then offered to to conduct a, it's called a quality improvement project here in, in Australia as um, it's essentially a mini research project where you implement some strategies, you identify a problem, in, implement some strategies and see if it's working to kind of improve your, your, your quality of care. And obviously if you're burnt out, you're not providing high quality of care. And the next response was, don't add that to your list of things to do. You're only new. (laughs) And okay, granted, sure, I was new, blah, 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 but that didn't mean that there wasn't a need. And so I took it upon myself because if you know me, I'm just, I'm not going to let things lie. I just, I'm just not a sit backer. (laughs) 
That's an official so title. Let's sit back. It really is. Absolutely. It really is. I, it's on I, your resume, I am certain. It, yeah, yeah. I made that up. <laughs> but look, and and that's I took it on myself. You know, it's it's time. You know, I need to take action. If I don't do it, no one else is going to do it for me. And I don't want to be a better nurse. I love being a nurse, and I want to keep being a nurse. And that led me on a journey to to creating, you know, the the last four years of my life, and and helping others beat and prevent burnout as well. So talk to me about nursing the nurse. Who is it for? What is it you do? You know, give us some real life examples of the benefits. Yeah, 100%. So after that very helpful encounter, <laughs> uh, like I say, it set me on a journey of research. I, I was looking into books, training, coaching, programs, you name it. I probably tried it. <laughs> I But then what I found was this huge, huge gap and lack of support and knowledge for the very unique needs of the nurse. Uh, you know, yes, granted, there's other industries that this will be applicable for, but obviously being a nurse, I was looking for nursing specific stuff. How do you manage shift work? How do you sleep? How do you unwind from work? Um, how do I deal with the trauma of having um, ex- have experiencing death regularly? Um, how do I experience, how do I deal with the, the emotional burdens of being abused physically and emotionally sometimes? Um, and you just don't get taught this stuff. And what I kept finding was like almost, but not quite, information that would like information that would help but not really it would be tailored to a ceo who could get up at 4 a.m every morning and have an hour of power nurses can't do that you know you finish work at 9 10 11 p.m get home you know and have to be back at work at 7 a.m the next day you know it just it just doesn't work um or it'd be tailored to the stay-at-home mom who only has to focus on running her household whereas nurses they are nurses then they go home they run a household um and so on and so on and so on. like there's just so many things um and I started to just glean the bits and the pieces that I was like okay like this is working for me that's working for me sharing it with my colleagues getting great feedback saying this is so easy to implement that worked so well thank you and I was like right there's something in this I need to I must share this uh, and that led to writing my book called nursing the nurse the ultimate six step guide to beating nurse burnout and I just condensed it all into six steps uh, because after all nurses don't have time <laughs> to have a hundred step process <laughs> uh, so I published that at the beginning of last year mm-hmm. um, and have since gone on to create a few other things that's fabulous and mm-hmm. you know recognizing you know the unique challenges that nurses face I think every profession, you know, sort of has its own uniqueness to it so that the, you know, the things that are specific to nurses, you know, are just for them. And Mm -hmm. we're not saying, obviously, that, you know, teachers don't have something or, you know, any other profession, but definitely nurses have, um, I guess, challenges in their job that we don't even consider, you know, Mm -hmm. being on the other side. What do Mm -hmm. you feel is the biggest misconception? about nursing and their burnout and what leads to it. What's the biggest misconception? Oh, look, I always talk to three, but I will say the top one is nurses thinking that it's normal to experience what they're experiencing early in their career because surely it'll get better as I get experience. You know, it's not going to get better (laughs) because the system is a broken system and we know that. We're not here to change the system. It's probably not going to change. But what we do have control over is how we work within the system, what actions we take, what strategies we put in place and how we look after ourselves. I always say self-care is a skill. It's not something you just, you don't just go to the spa and that's it. You know, there's, there's you got it. It's a skill that you have to learn. It's a muscle you have to exercise and practice. It's ongoing. Oh yeah. hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. So you said there were three and that was the mm. top one. What are the other two? Yeah. So the next one is saying often nurses think that being a yes woman, yes man is the way to be a valuable team member. That's not the case. I always say it's more about learning how to say no and becoming healthily selfish because nurses are hardwired to give, give, give. And they really, really struggle to firstly say, hey, I need help because we don't like being on the other side of the clipboard. And the other one is we just we have guilt around asking for to receive. 
Uh, and the last one, and again, this is my one of my favorites, is learning how to unwind. The skill of unwinding is just as important as learning the skill of self-care, learning how to leave work at the door and be able to be fully present for your loved ones, for your personal life, and leave um, home at the door and be fully present for your, for your patients uh, in a healthy and resourceful way. Can you give us a real-world example of how to unwind? Yeah, absolutely. I My favorite activity for unwinding is just doing a brain dump getting all that clutter out into the world (laughs) because when it's in our minds it's foggy it is overwhelming and it is all consuming sometimes and so just being able to word vomit onto a piece of pay uh, a piece of paper or you know if you're a typing if you prefer technology typing it out or if you prefer voice just speaking it out just a way to get it out of that brain fog and onto onto something that you can kind of go, okay, I feel better. <laughs> um, and then you can start creating your your to-do lists or, you know, you can get rid of that, um, let's call it emotional baggage of the day. So you say, for example, you had a really tough shift or there's some crazy stuff happening in your personal life and you just just don't know what to do about it. Just getting it out, it will it'll be the first step to getting you on track to taking action uh, without feeling flustered. What are some signs of burnout that nurses should be on the lookout for? Mm. This is again one of those that, that nurses think is normal, which is it's not, is not sleeping, not eating well. You know, the, we, we have so many nurses who are subconsciously emotional eating at the nurse's desk. Um, I know for us here, again, in Australia, we are not allowed to receive any any gifts that aren't edible or that can't die. So for example, it needs to be flowers or it needs to be food. (laughs) We're not allowed to receive any other gifts of thanks from, from patients and their families. So nurses often have either pizza, chocolates, chips, lollies lying around at the nurse's desk or a dying vase of flowers. (laughs) Um, And so we'll be emotionally eating throughout. Like, you know, you're having a tough shift. Oh, I need a quick sugar boost. Or having a night shift, didn't sleep well, don't have a routine to set yourself up. I need a sugar rush. Um, And uh, also, again, not making time for for self-care, not making time to look after your body and and moving it in that doesn't work as in exercise. Um, And a couple of other red flags is when you start noticing tensions in your personal life that you didn't have before you know when you start snapping at your family and you're like oh I just need you to leave me alone or like you just you know you you still have your nurse's hat on when you get home um those are a couple of things um and look I'm trying to think of a few more that I that I personally experienced I was living off of six cups of coffee and tea a day just to keep me going (laughs) um yeah oh yeah Yeah. as Um, someone who does not consume caffeine at all I mean, I just picture myself running out on the highway, you know, after six (laughs) cups of coffee. Yeah. And I I was, I was, I was, I thought I was as smooth and as cool as a cucumber. And I wasn't like, I was a jittery mess. Um, When I finally cut cold turkey um, about three years ago, oh, three or four years ago now, I was getting proper withdrawals, um, not having realized the impact that it was having on me. Whereas now when I forget to order my decaf, because I do love my cuppa, you know, I get those same effects. I get the shakiness, I get the headaches and things like that. So yeah, there are definitely a few uh, red flags and often we just put it down to, it must be normal. I must still be getting used to it. It's not normal. It's unlikely you'll get used to it. Can I help you? Can I ask you to help clarify a visual I now have because of something Please. you said? Yeah. Um, you said you, you know, leaving, you're taking off your nurse's hat, you know, when you're at home. Do you guys mm-hmm. wear hats in Australia? Do you guys wear like the little <laughs> nurse's hats? No. Come on, don't ruin this visual for me because I love no. that. I love that. <laughs> Look, I wish not anymore. We used to. <laughs> I know. And do you do it for graduation? Because I know they do it like here yeah. for like graduation, but then oh, yeah. no one ever does. But I have aunts who are like 500 years old and they were nurses and all of yes. their pictures and they used to go to work with their little hats on. And that was sort of, mm. you know, again, part of the phrase, uniform, but a hat fields and McCoys like the older generation wore them and then the younger generation didn't. But like yeah. literally that would have been amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I'm just if you if anyone's looking for a suggestion, I say we go back to that because it's just phenomenal. <laughs> 
<laughs> Probably the, the most annoying thing. The I was no- going to say, nurses worldwide, they will, um, they, they might disprove. Yeah, they, they would be a revolt. <laughs> but okay, all right, okay. Um, yeah, I just, yeah. it was like the burning question that, that was in yeah. my mind. Fair Talk enough. about the, the culture <laughs> mm. of nurses, oh. the myths, you know, th- the things that maybe us on this side of the mm. clipboard, as you said, do not know. Mm. Oh, one big one is, and I know that this happens not only in Australia, it happens worldwide, having to talk to clients, other nurses, colleagues, you name it, is there's this culture of nurses eating their young. Now, what, what we mean by that is nurses will come, you know, be brand new on the ward. They'd be all doughy eyed like I was and and try and do all the things and you know, oh, I'm here to save lives. <laughs> and then the uh, old bitter nurse will come in, uh, swoop in and just be like, it's not going to get better. And, you know, you're not, you're not, you know, why are you coming in with these new policies and, and whatnot? And it really discourages and there's a lot of bullying going on. Um, and it, that actually is changing now where some of the newer nurses are eating the older nurses. It's just like this major toxic culture that's going on. Um, and the reason, and I put it down to burnout, everyone, everyone's tensions are, are you know, they're all high, strung, they're all just spread thin, overworked, underappreciated. And it just, you know, you feel, you can feel very overwhelming and very, um, almost like, oh, like, what can I do? <laughs> um, and so it is one of my my biggest um, points is you need to be able to learn how to deal with others who are experiencing burnout, um, even if you're in burnout as well, because at the end of the day, we've got to have grace for one another. We're all in the thick of it. I mean, I can talk about one story where I was very quickly, I was able to identify that this nurse was in burnout and if I didn't have the strategies in place that I do, I wouldn't be nursing today. And we had basically, I was in an ICU, uh, working as an ICU nurse. We had just lost a patient after unsuccessful re- resuscitation attempts, multiple, in fact. And we'd um, cleared cleared our workspace and, and notified the family and so on. And I turned to this senior nurse and asked, when are we going to have our debrief? You know, we've all just, you know, we, we've lost a life. It's, it's a real thing. And still makes me so sad is her response was, it's almost end of shift. We are very behind. And plus, it's going to happen again. There's no point in debriefing. Hmm. That's why I mean, I wouldn't be nursing today if I didn't have the strategies in place to unwind and to deal with the trauma of experiencing death. And whilst, like I said before, nurses experience this all the time and we start thinking, oh, it's, you know, it's just going to happen again. la di let's keep, keep going. But we have this, this, you know, it's almost like a pressure cooker where you just mm. press it all down and like, oh, no, I'm fine. It's part of the job, blah, blah, blah. And guess what? It's going to boil over or you're going to turn into this stone cold nurse. Right. Better. That the fact that it's it. part of the job does not mean it's not a difficult part of the job. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, again, one of those things that we just don't get prepared for in nursing. I, You know, you talk to a nurse, you ask them, what is the biggest thing you learn as a nurse? It's not how to look after yourself or how to be a good caregiver. It's documentation. Yeah. It's if it wasn't written down, it didn't happen. And, uh, you know, P.S., make sure you look after yourself, but there's no how to. There's no when to, um, and that's what I'm here to change. So let me ask you a question just from the side of the clipboard. What is it as patients you wish we knew as far as what we could do to make things better for you, therefore better for us? If we, you know, sort of can participate in our care, what Mm. advice or tips would you give to someone as a patient if they're able? Mm. Oh, man (laughs) have grace have compassion you know we we are at we are with people at their highest points and at their lowest points in their life sometimes and um we completely understand that you are concerned for your loved one or that you are in pain and we understand that that is why your patients might be running low however we are the middleman between management that doesn't understand working in a broken system that don't appreciate the fact that you 
you are where you're at um, and between you wanting to give you the best care that we can. So grace and compassion is the biggest thing because a flustered nurse is an unsafe nurse. And so the more pressure you put on them when you're rude, of course, if you're concerned, please speak up. But Mm -hmm. the more pressure you put on that is rude, condescending, bullying, harassment, abuse, that nurse isn't going to function well. You're going to be at more risk than anything sure. else. How common is nurse burnout? Oh, I looked this up the other day <laughs> because I was quoting statistics from pre-COVID. Um, mm-hmm. It used to be sitting around uh, 60, 60 to 80%. We are now sitting at 97% of nurses will report symptoms of burnout. Is that, that in was- Australia or is that worldwide? Worldwide. Okay. It was a census taken, a recent study that was published at the end of last year. So at the end of 2023, mm. 97% of nurses will experience or show symptoms of burnout. And that is staggering. It is unacceptable. It's not sustainable. <laughs> That's no. what it is. It's not sustainable. Nurses, yeah. We have nurses leaving the industry left, front and center thinking that they are not cut out for it. Mm. that they just can't deal with it anymore. I must get out. Otherwise I will, I will, I'm in survival mode. I'm, I can't, I can't keep going. I just can't. It's not the nursing. It's the business of nursing that's doing it. hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why I say the system is broken. I get it. Um, It's how we deal with it, how we work within it, how we look after ourselves. Sure. It's going to make the difference. Talk to me about your website and what will people find there? Yeah. So my website, uh, nursingthenurse.com, is, you'll find a great resource. I've got a free on-demand training called How to Create the Work-Life Balance and Self-Care You Need as a Nurse Without Burning Out and Without Leaving an Industry You Love and Doing All of That Guilt-Free. The guilt-free part is so important because we just ah, it just comes back to guilt every time and we just don't want to put our hand up. So that I share that and I, I kind of expand more on those three big myths that I talked about earlier and just bust them, you know, just create, a, you know, an actionable steps of like, what are your next steps? How do you go through those and how do you move through them? Um, yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's what you'll find there. And I've also got my book and my membership. I've just got some absolute awesome goodies up there that I'd love to share with you. Tell us about your book. Mm. So like I said, Nursing the Nurse, the ultimate six-step guide to beating nurse burnout are the six steps that I found are the key to moving through burnout and and preventing it for the long run. And um, that one can be found at nursingthenurse.com forward slash NTN dash book dash P-O-D. And that's just, that's there for you if you want to grab it. It's a hundred page book. It's just action packed. I'm not about fluff. It's just do this, do this, do this. This is why we do it. And that's it. Because again, nurses don't have the time Mm. (laughs) to deal with fluff. (laughs) We will put a link to that in the show notes so people can connect with you. Uh, Awesome. That'd be fantastic. Thank you. (laughs) Janelle, what is your Monty? As you know, Monty is our mascot here at Belmont City Press. And he's sort of that beacon of all things inspirational or a lesson learned or maybe just a mantra that we carry with us. So what is your Monty? Absolutely. Mine is definitely resilience is a choice every day. You need to choose resilience and it's not going to, it's not going to get easier, but you'll get better at dealing with it. Mm. And that's what I live by. Fabulous. Are you <laughs> ready for our rapid fire session? Sure. Let's let's go. Hit me. <laughs> we're we're going to get to know the Janelle beh- behind the Janelle. So I'm going to give you two <laughs> choices and you tell me which one speaks to you. Got it. And then my role in this is to tell you whether or not you're right or wrong. And <laughs> that is completely oh based in fact. And by fact, I mean my opinion. So Fair enough. It's All my right. podcast. <laughs> You do what you do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, are you a morning person or a night owl? Night owl. Okay. All right. Um, that'll that'll probably dissipate with age, but I'm just saying. Um, so I've salad- got two young kids, so it ha- yeah. I have to be. <laughs> yeah, I have to be both. <laughs> so exactly. Sunrise or sunset? Which would you rather watch? Ooh, sunset. Really? Hmm. Maybe it's because you're on the other side of the world for me. I would rather Maybe. sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> Um, spicy or mild? Spicy. Okay. That is absolutely wrong. I'm letting you know right now. (laughs) I, I, everything is upside down right now. You'll Um, get along. I mean, I'm down under. 
This is true. This is true. Right. <laughs> and I I think ketchup is spicy. So that's basically the person you're working with. Oh, Absolutely. boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, um, Would you rather be hot or cold? I'd rather be cold. Really? Yeah. Um, Janelle, we cannot hang out together. That's all I'm you saying. have not experienced the Australian heat, my friend. <laughs> and I get that. But being cold, I think, you know what it is? I, I don't want to be hot either, but I yep. feel like. I can control that or we have ways of controlling that. You can't, you know, going outside and being freezing cold, you're just incapacitated. You know what I will say is the, this is my reasoning behind it is mm. you can always add layers. You can't take your skin off. You can, Well, if you do, you're <laughs> going to end up at the hospital and then you're exactly. going to be dealing with a nurse who's in trauma. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so would you rather go to an art museum or a history museum? Oh, I wouldn't want to go to either. Really? If I had to, cho I had no. to choose one, I would go art. <laughs> we we are not going to be roommates. That's all I'm saying to you. Um, glasses oh, or contacts? <laughs> glasses. Yeah, glasses, 100%. Okay, yeah. you got that one right. Yeah, and then you. chocolate Take or me. vanilla. I know exactly. it's not exactly a passing grade, but um, chocolate or vanilla? Mm, okay, chocolate for everything except for ice cream. Okay, so this is where you're wrong. All right. And the, I say this I, this story every time. I can do vanilla on everything but ice cream. So we're never going to fight uh -huh. over a gallon in the fridge or the no, freezer. No, no. When I was not. a child, my younger sister got an ice cream maker for Christmas and she made vanilla ice cream and it, I was violently ill and I can no longer <laughs> eat vanilla ice cream. So I'm oh, sorry. No. See, I'm like that with chocolate ice cream. That happened to me on my 16th birthday, the Neapolitan ice cream. I had way too much of the strawberry and the chocolate. I was very ill. It was not a good time. <laughs> I think she. I think it wasn't just like I ate too much. I think she made it wrong, or I don't know what, oh, no. what she put in there. But I, I was like, I, I saw God. I was so ill. Like it was bad. Like I was. Poor thing. I was like seven. Oh. You know. You know. Getting my affairs in order. I was. Oh Ill. Yeah. Ill. <laughs> you rem you remember that clearly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. All right. Our guest to guest question. Mm -hmm. As you know, the guest before you left behind a question for you to answer during our show today. So are you ready mm -hmm. for your guest to guest question? I am ready. All right. This is going to be an easy one for you. Um, okay. What has been your best ever learning experience? I think we've talked about that one is definitely, definitely going through burnout. I mean, to be fair, I will add, if I may, a second answer to that is learning to become a parent has also been a biggest learning experience. Do you think you are? Kids. Right. Do you think? you know the benefits of you being a nurse and being a mom is there a lot of dovetailing is there a lot of you oh know? yeah oh yeah. yeah so much patient I've got I've got a uh, very angry patient toddler sometimes <laughs> and having learned how to deal and uh what's it called um conflict resolution skills mm -hmm. definitely come into play there <laughs> have you asked them for their insurance card you know oh like, look I'm this bam. close <laughs> yeah you need your insurance card. Yeah. So, all right. So one, one more time. Website, what is it? Where do people find you? Are you on social media? And remind us about the book. Yeah, absolutely. So I my website is nursingthenurse.com. You'll find my free on-demand training there. Mm -hmm. And the link to my book will also be there for you as well in the description. Um, I can also be contacted. If you just want to say hi and touch base, ask some questions, I'd love to hear from you at, on hello at nursingthenurse.com. And I am definitely on social media. I'm on both Instagram and uh, Facebook at Mindfulness for Health AU. It's slightly different because we're rebranding, but that is that for now. Um, and uh, yeah, we'd love to connect with you. We will put those things in the show notes as well. Um, tell me, if I gave you 60 seconds to tell us a story, what would the world learn from you? Oh, tell the story now or just what would they learn? Well, I mean, I'll give you 60, you know, I'll give you a minute. Tell us a story that we can learn a lesson from you. Oh, boy. Um, Oh, I, sh I like prepared it and now it's left my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is something you'd like people to know? Mm. I mean, oh, so many things. <laughs> right. I could just download my well, brain. Let me, Let's ask do you one, let me ask you one more question then. Do you mm. work with nurses everywhere, like throughout, you know, nationally, internationally? Oh, yeah, 100%. So I work with the nurses in the major, major countries, um, like 
Australia, New Zealand, Canada, USA, UK, and Europe as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, my my main goal at the end of the day is to create a platform where nurses can have tailored support. Mm-hmm. So in one of my other programs, my I've got I called it my holistic huddle membership. It's a gym membership in your pocket that I have worked with a physiotherapist, a nutritionist, and a mindset coach where we create this holistic platform for nurses mm-hmm. to to just beat burnout, have a great, great experience, like just get their mindset in order, get their health in order, um, right in their pocket, whenever, wherever. So my goal at the end of the day is to to take these principles, take these resources, make it available, um, and eventually bring it into our training as nurses so that we can learn this stuff before we reach burnout, before we are overwhelmed. Um, and so that's, that's my mission in life is just to to be I'm all about prevention and that's something we get taught for our patients we don't get taught that for ourselves your your mission in life is to nurse the nurse 100 percent, absolutely <laughs> Janelle I appreciate your time it's extremely valuable and I hope I honored that here today absolutely thank you so much for having me thank you to our listeners if you have a story to share visit tellusastorypodcast.com if you're an aspiring author a seasoned business owner or looking to elevate your personal brand, visit BelmontCityPress.com for expert advice on writing your own success story. Trust the next chapter because you are the author. Now, tell us a story.